this is going to be a problem because this solve is this asking the multiple choice. It's going to be often asking your FRQ for response portion of your AP exam. You need to know each branch and the other branch. All right, let's go over President versus Congress, the legislative branch versus the presidency or the executive branch. The President of the United States has formed formal checks, which are checks that are found in the Constitution of the United States, and he also has informal ones. Like, for example, what does the V stand for? Yeah. Veto. A special kind of veto is what? Pocket veto. That's also in the Constitution of the United States, so that would be a formal check. And then what can he do with congressional sessions? Adjourn. He can adjourn them or he can convene. convene them, or he can make them meet. That's also a check on Congress. Um, when Congress is on recess, what can he do? He can make executive appointments without whose consent? Congress. Without Congress or specifically the Senate's consent. What does this three stand for? He can recommend legislation or he recommend bills to Congress. He can't necessarily propose it himself, but he can recommend bills to Congress. That's another way he can influence what goes on um, in the legislative branch. Questions about that? Then he has informal checks, checks that are not necessarily in the Constitution of the United States. He has persuasion or bargaining powers. What does the B stand for? That's one way he can persuade Congress to fulfill his legislative agenda. The bully pulpit, the attention given to him by the what? By the media. Is that attention in the Constitution? No, it just so happened that that's just the way it is today. He can do log rolling by using his what as leverage? Log rolling just means negotiation, but he can use his veto as leverage when he's dealing with Congress. I'll pass this bill for you, I won't veto it if you pass my bill ne next time. What does that stand for? Signing statements. signing statements. What are signing statements? Whenever he signs a bill into a law, he often includes a signing statement which explains why he signed it into a law in the first place or the things that he finds what? Unnecessary, Unnecessary or objectionable. He can also explain how he's going to do what with the law. How he's going to enforce with the law and which ones he's not going to what? Enforce, which is better than a veto because it cannot be what? Overridden. It cannot be overridden. Any questions about a signing statement? All right, three. Everybody know what that is? You can send troops to another country without whose consent? Congress's consent. That's not really in the Constitution because in the Constitution, who can declare war? Congress can declare war, but nowadays the president has been given the authority to send troops from the country without a declaration of war, so that can be considered a check. What's another check? What's, this, what's over here? Four. If he doesn't get what he wants from Congress, he, if Congress is unwilling to pass the things that he wants them to pass, the last resort the president does is what? Executive, Executive order. order, where he does it himself, where he orders an agency or a, or a, a bureaucracy to do what he wants without congressional legislation, which is basically him making law, but it's not necessarily law, it's an executive order. Any questions about this side? Go to this side. Congressional checks on the President of the United States, what does the O stand for? What can he do to veto? What can he do to veto? Override. No override. What does it take to override? Two thirds of both houses. Two thirds of both houses. This house right here is very powerful over the presidency because they have a lot of checks over the president, including the ability to do what with his appointments. They can confirm or deny or block his appointments if they want to. The Senate is very powerful in that way. Because they are stand for. They can ratify treaties or they can reject treaties if they want to. This refers to Congress's power of the what? First. First. Whenever the president of the United States wants to do something, it still needs to be what? It needs to be funded, and who funds things in the United States? Congress. Congress does. The Appropriations Committee, Congress does. They appropriate funds. Any questions about this? How do they limit the President's war powers, his ability to send troops to another country? Do they have a law passed called the what? War Powers Act or War Powers Resolution? Within 20, 48 hours of committing troops to another country, they need to let who know? Congress. They need to let Congress know. The presidents need to let no, notify Congress. And number two, they have how many days to stay in a country without congressional? 60. They have 60 days, or else they have to do what? Come back in 30. They have to come back, and they have 30 days to do so. Any questions about the War Powers Act? A lot of you were getting this wrong on your tests. 
uh, you were saying that one of the president's uh, powers informally is the War Powers Act. The War Powers Act is not meant to make the president more powerful. He's already powerful when it comes to the military because he's the freaking what? Commander in chief, right? That's why he is able to send troops to another country. This is designed, this is passed to limit that power, to shrink that power a little bit, to check that power a little bit. Make sure you remember that. Anyone confused so far, guys, before it's too late? What does the IAM stand for? Impeach. Who can impeach? Which house? House, but then the Senate can do what? Remove with a conviction. Any questions about this one? This one's the longest one. It's shorter from here, hopefully. They can issue executive orders that carries the force of law. So if he doesn't get the law that he wants passed by Congress, he can always just do it himself using an executive order. All right, legislative branch versus the judicial branch. Let's go to this side because it's longer. What's one thing unique to the Senate that they can do against the judicial branch? Confirm. Any appointments made by the President of the United States to the federal judiciary, to judgeships or justiceships, they have to be confirmed by which house? Senate. By the Senate. They can block those appointments if they want to. That's one way they can influence what happens in the federal judiciary because they get to approve those appointments. Any questions about that? This one, a lot of you got wrong on your tests last time. They can create what? Oh, they can create houses on um, they can create lower courts, they can create the inferior courts. Not only can they create inferior courts, they can decide what kind of power do they have. What's that word? Jurisdiction. jurisdiction. What kind of jurisdiction these lower courts have. The entire existence of the lower federal courts depends a lot on Congress. Very good. Number three, they can change the size of who? The Supreme Court. The Supreme Court. Not only the Supreme Court, but the lower <coughs> courts as well. They can change the size of the lower courts as well. But they can change the size of the federal courts even including the Supreme Court of the United States. That's number four. That's Article 5 of the Constitution. It's Article 5 of the Constitution. It's the process. What process? The what? Article 5 describes the procedure in which we can do what to the Constitution of the United States? Change it. If a law declare, uh, was declared unconstitutional by the courts, one way that they can check that power is they can propose an amendment to the Constitution. Can they change it by themselves? No, ratification of their proposal to add something to the Constitution always needs to be approved by who? Three-fourths of the states. Three-fourths of the states. Let's remember that in your head. Well, some of you remember, some of you don't. To amend the Constitution is to propose, and to ratify, which one of those is Congress can be involved in? Proposal. Proposal. Two thirds of both houses can propose an amendment, or two thirds of the states can propose an amendment. But those proposals still need to be ratified by three fourths of the states. Any questions about that? All right, they can create legislation to do two things. Number one, if, if the judicial branch declares one of their laws unconstitutional, how can they pass a legislation that would correct that? What can they do with legislation? They can clarify. They can lessen the impact of a, leg of a Supreme Court ruling with their legislation. They can make it so that the impact of a judicial ruling doesn't carry much of a weight. Uh, or, like Silver said, they can clarify their, their legislation, they can change stuff with their law so that it's not one anymore. So it's not unconstitutional anymore. So make sure you know these two things. Number one, they can change or clarify the law so that to avoid judicial review, to go around judicial review. Or number two, they can make a law that would lessen the impact of a decision. You guys remember the abortion example, where they can limit Roe versus Wade by limiting funding to abortion clinics in the United States with a law. That's something Congress can do. All right, what's the biggest weakness of the courts? That they have to rely on others to do what with their decisions? To enforce. And sometimes enforcement requires what? Money. And where do we get money from? It goes from Congress. What does I am stand for again? Impeachment. Impeachment. Who can we impeach in the federal courts? The justices and the what? The judges of the federal courts. 
Any confusion? All right. What's the only thing the judicial branch can do to the other ones? Judicial, judicial review. In case of Congress, what can they declare unconstitutional when it comes to Congress? Judicial. Laws or legislation passed by Congress. Any questions about this? Right, make sure you're following along. Make sure you're understanding. That's that's the best thing. Make sure you're understanding. If there's something you don't you don't not quite sure how this branch can limit you of that branch by doing that, let me know please so that we can explain this before um, we take your time on Thursday. All right, legislative versus the federal bureaucracy. Let's do this. What can the Senate do specifically against the federal bureaucracy? Confirm. They can confirm the appointments made by the president to the heads of agencies and departments. Anybody have a question on that? So the Senate can block those appointments if they feel like you're not a good Secretary of State, for example. The Senate can decide to block your appointment. They don't have to approve of it. But as I am stand for, the impeachment, they can impeach heads of agencies and departments, they can impeach bureaucrats if they misbehave or they do something that is illegal. Any questions? Like if I was a Secretary of Defense and I'm spending money that I'm not supposed to spend, that's something that can be impeachable, and Congress can impeach me for that. So a bureaucrat in the federal bureaucracy can also be impeached by Congress. All right, this is important for today. It was congressional oversight. It's Congress exercising authority over who? <laughs> the federal bureaucracy using two methods. The first method is what to tinker with their what? With their budget. Maybe expand the budget or maybe limit the budget if they're not implementing the policies the way Congress wants it to be implemented. What's the other, another way to exercise congressional oversight? Sorry? Congressional hearings. They can call the leaders of these agencies and departments into a congressional hearing and they can investigate what goes on. Why you're not implementing the policy the way Congress wants it to be implemented. Why you're spending your money in an irresponsible manner. So this is a way for Congress to put pressure on an agency. So make sure you remember congressional oversight, very important. So one of the things that agencies have been allowed to do is exercise discretion when they're implementing policy. How can Congress limit that discretion? By making their laws or their legislation more detailed. By doing that, you, exercise, you limit their freedom to implement their, your policy the way they want it to be implemented. All right, this one right here, I know some of you are new to this one, federal bureaucracy has just been introduced. But one way the federal bureaucracy can check each one of these branches of government is by taking their policy and exercising their own discretion when it comes to implementing that policy. These policies come from Congress, they come from the judicial branch, and they come from the President of the United States. But who has to carry them out? The federal bureaucracy can. And they're given, most of the time, a lot of leeway to do so. And sometimes, they can implement those policies in a way that may not be preferred by these policymakers. So they can implement a law in a way that who doesn't like it to be implemented? Congress doesn't like it to be implemented. Oh, other, these other policymakers. Nobody confused by administrative discretion. Uh, let's move on. President versus the judicial branch. Anybody can fill this the first one for me. How can the president limit the, or influence what goes on in the federal judicial branch in the courts? Yeah, they can grant pardons, even though a court declares somebody guilty of a crime. The United States can turn around and grant him a pardon. What does the A stand for? His most important power? Yeah. Appointments to judges of, and justices of the federal bureaucracy. Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. Can you please send me Daniela Enriquez? Daniela Enriquez, please. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And then you have executive privilege. The President of the United States can deny information to the courts. If the courts want information, the President of the United States can deny them of that information if it has to do with national security. And then judicial review. What can they declare unconstitutional against the President? Is what? His executive orders, his actions, his agreements, all of those can be declared unconstitutional by the courts. Sir? Yes, sir. Is there a limit to how many um, pardons we can get? No. <coughs> as, as long as it's uh, for federal crimes. But again, it's often very controversial. President versus the federal bureaucracy. 
But oh, why did I put a special thing on here? This is an intra-branch check because this is within a branch. This is within the executive branch itself. What is this? Can uh, appoint and fire who? The heads of agency. Why only the heads? Why not all bureaucrats? What limits him from doing that? The civil service system limits him from doing that. Today, most of the bureaucratic jobs are not appointed by the president for political reasons. They're appointed and promoted based on what? Merit. Merit. That's because of the civil service system. Any questions about that? All right, what does the E stand for? What can he do? Executive order. What's an executive order again? It's an order given to who by the president? The federal bureaucracy. To an agency or department of the federal bureaucracy. So that's another way he can influence them. And number three, the budget that ultimately funds these guys, he approves of it. So he ultimately approves the federal budget, which means he has some say in how much money each agency and each department is going to get. Again, administrative discretion. All of his executive orders, they can decide to implement it the way the bureaucrats will implement it and it may not be this may not be to the way that the president of the United States wants it to be implemented. This is the civil service system. Make sure you remember this. It limits the president's influence over the federal bureaucracy. Because nowadays his appointment power is limited to the heads of agencies and departments and he could no longer inspire any bureaucrat that he wants for political reasons just because they disagree with his agenda. A lot of those bureaucrats, their jobs are pretty safe. Even if they try to go against the President of the United States. Who has to worry about the President? The heads, the heads right? But, and, but not all bureaucrats have to worry about what the President th thinks about them. But sir, can't the heads fire the They could. The they could, but they can't fire them for political reasons. Oh. They have to find a reason that you're bad at your job. They can't fire you just because you went against the President of the United States. But the President can't um, fire like, the heads if they're... If they're not following his agenda, or they're not pursuing it the way he wants it to be pursued. All right. Next, judicial branch versus the federal bureaucracy. How can the judicial branch exercise judicial review over them? They can declare their what unconstitutional? Their regulations. Remember, what kind of authority do we give to federal bureaucracies? They have what kind of authority? Discretionary and what else? The ability to make rules and regulations. It's called rulemaking authority. Those rules and regulations can be declared unconstitutional by the federal courts. All right, administrative discretion. Who has to implement and enforce the decisions made by the courts? The federal bureaucracy does and they can implement and enforce those decisions the way they would want it to be implemented, exercising their own judgment and expertise, and maybe not necessarily the way who wants it to be implemented. The courts want it to be implemented, or the judicial branch wants it to be implemented. So think of this like judicial review. This is the only thing that they can do against the other branches. They can exercise discretion. They can exercise their own judgment. They can implement and enforce the policy in a way that may not necessarily make the policy makers who made the policy in the first place happy. How do you limit that discretion? If you're a judge or a justice making a decision, you need to make your decision more what? Specific. Specific and how you want it to be implemented. That's how you limit the discretion, the bureaucratic or administrative discretion. Any questions so far? So this, did I forget anything? That's what I want to ask, because there's a lot of these. Anybody think I forgot something? You're wrong, but did I forget anything? No, I probably, I probably forgot a lot, did I? Anybody think I forgot something? All right, so this is going to be part of your exam. So your exam will be a federal bureaucracy and checks and balances. You don't necessarily have to memorize them in your head, but make sure you can recognize them and you can provide examples if somebody asks you, how can this limit this? Make sure you can provide examples uh, in order to do that. Especially in this unit, pay close attention to these boxes dealing with the federal bureaucracy because that's probably going to be definitely absent in the test. Any questions so far? 
Alright, I'm going to allow you to ask me questions before we take a quiz on the federal bureaucracy. <laughs> Which branch do they belong to again? Executive <laughs> branch, everyone's key, that's easy. They implement and enforce policy coming from Congress, which are laws, rulings made by the courts, executive orders made by the President of the United States, they're the ones in charge of implementing them. <coughs> what if no agency exists that can handle that responsibility? What can Congress do? Create they can create one. All right, cabinet departments, how many of them are there? There's 15. What do we call the people who work in them? It's called secretary, except for the Department of Justice is known as the Attorney General. Who appoints these people? President, President of the United States. And together, they're known as the President's what? Cabinet. It's cabinet. So they have two responsibilities. They are the leaders of each one of these agencies, and they advise the President of the United States from time to time. They get together and they advise the President from time to time. And then you have agencies and commissions. Um, some of them are independent, some of them are under the departments, but they're in charge of something very specific sometimes, like the FBI, the CIA, NASA. They're in charge of something, a policy area that's very specific, or they're in charge of controlling or regulating a portion of the economy. Give me a regulatory agency that regulates a portion of the, an industry of the economy. The FDA, they regulate food and drugs. What else regulates? What other agency regulates and controls, make rules for? The EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, they control a certain area. The Department of Transportation, they control a certain area. Anybody have any questions on that? What does the FCC control? Federal Communications Commission. TV, TV and radio, they control that certain economic sector. What do I mean by control, guys? They make what? Rules. They make regulations. Any questions about that? What are government co corporations? They run like regular companies, only who owns them? The government. The government. We own them, right? These are taxpayer-owned companies, basically. What's the most important example so that you don't get lost in your test? The mail. The mail. The USPS, oh, sorry. The U.S. Postal Service is the most important example. They're probably going to be asking you this on your test. All right. These are the people that work in the federal bureaucracy. They're called civil servants or bureaucrats. Before, most of the jobs in the federal bureaucracy were awarded based on what? No. Before. Oh, patronage. patronage. Political connection, especially with whom? With the President, with the President of the United States, where he would just hire five people based on political connection, based on whether or not they're willing to fulfill his agenda or agree with him. And as a result, the bureaucracy kind of sucks. And then we changed that with the Dependent and Civil Service Act, which created what system? The merit, merit system or the civil service system. Make sure you remember that. Uh, it established the merit system. Hirings and promotions in most of the jobs in the federal bureaucracy are going to be based on what? Merit. 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 Uh, tests, qualifications. That's what happened because of the civil service system. Is the president of the Gulf Coast Maine? Grover Cleveland. Why is Grover Cleveland? All right. It is illegal today to fire or or demote someone in the bureaucracy based on what? Political, Political reasons, just because he doesn't agree with the president, just because he's a Democrat, for example. You can't fire him. You need to have provided a lot of evidence that he's doing a bad job. Right now, if you want a secure job, work for the federal bureaucracy because if they can't prove that you're doing a bad job, they can't fire you just because they don't like you. They don't, they don't agree with your positions. Today, presidential appointments are limited to where? The heads of agencies, that's it. The president's uh, influence over the federal bureaucracy and how they implement policy is greatly limited because of the civil service system. All right. Um, why do we often see federal bureaucrats testifying in front of congressional committees when they're talking about bills? Because they're the experts. Because they're the experts. They have the expertise. All right, make sure you know this, guys. In order to do their job properly, they're given two powers, <coughs> rulemaking authority and discretionary authority. Rulemaking authority is their ability to create what? Okay, here's what you need to remember in your head. Most of the time, when Congress makes a law, it's very general. It's very vague. It, it has a goal that it wants to accomplish, but to fill in the details and how to achieve that goal, who do, you, who do they usually assign that responsibility to? The bureaucracy. Why? 
they specialize in that, they're experts in that. Congress may lack the expertise to know how they can achieve a certain goal, but the bureaucracies would know how, or they're supposed to know how because they have, they have the expertise. So usually when they make a policy, it's very general, they have a vague goal that they want to achieve, and they leave it up to the agencies to achieve that goal, giving them these two powers. Rulemaking authority, which is their ability to create rules and regulation. What do we call those rules and regulation? Because sometimes they carry the force of law. What do we call them? They're called administrative law or bureaucratic law. Administrative law or bureaucratic law. In order to achieve a goal, sometimes these agencies are given the authority to make rules and regulations to achieve a goal. And they're also given a lot of discretion. What is discretion? Their ability to exercise their own what? Judgment and expertise when they're implementing or enforcing a policy. How can that how can that sometimes limit the influence of Congress and the president? Because sometimes they're exercising so much discretion that they're implementing a policy the way who doesn't like it? Congress. Congress, Congress or president doesn't like it. The policymakers don't like it. Any questions about discretionary authority and rulemaking authority? Is it called administrative? Law or bureaucratic law? carry the force of law. Any questions about this first part, guys? All right, make sure you know what an iron triangle is. Make sure you know the three components. What are the three components of an iron triangle in your head? Congress. Congressional committees, what else? Interest, Interest groups and federal bureaucracy. Make sure you know how each one can benefit from the other. All right, very fast. This is really fast. How can an interest group benefit from this relationship? From Congress, they can get what from Congress? Policies that they want passed, passed. They can get some their preferred policies. And from the bureaucracy, they can get those policies what? Enforced the way they want it to be enforced. That's why they engage in these relationships. Any questions about that? Congress, what does Congress get from the interest groups? Inform they get information. They get, they get more electoral support. What is electoral support? They get votes or they get what for their campaigns? Or they get funding for their campaigns. That's why they engage in this relationship. What do they get from the bureaucracy? They get their laws enforced the way who wants it? <coughs> who likes it to be enforced? <coughs> Hold on. <coughs> from the bureaucracy, they get their policies enforced the way they would like it to be enforced. Correct. Anybody have any questions on that? What does the federal bureaucracy get from this relation? What does it get from Congress? What? Sorry? More money. They get more money. If they suck up to the congressmen, they're going to get more funding from Congress. What do they get from interest groups? They get information that they need to implement policies properly. They get data, sometimes very expensive data. Interest groups have that data. For those of you that did your homework, that's something that you need to remember. Any questions about this iron triangle? Today, a lot, of a lot of political scientists say that this is too simplistic, that each congressional committee and bureaucracy and interest group are actually involved in multiple iron triangles. What do we call those iron triangles? Issue networks. Issue networks, also known as sub-governments, so make sure you remember that. Issue networks or sub-governments. Oh, some, something that I forgot to mention last time, guys. Whose influence is limited because of iron triangles? The president's influence, if you notice, is not involved in this. Instead of his bureaucracy, this is his department, this is his branch. Instead of his branch doing his bidding, they're doing whose bidding instead? The interest group and sometimes Congress's bidding. So this greatly limits the influence of the president. Who's influ who else's influence is limited? Our influence. Because the bureaucracies and, the, and Congress are so busy pleasuring the interest groups, they forget about us and what we need and what we want. And Congress makes policy according to what interest groups want, and the, bureau the bureaucrat enforces those policies the way um, the interest groups want, instead of paying attention to what we need and what we want. Any questions about uh, iron triangles? Will we take your tests? Test? Alright, I'm sorry. Oh, we talked about this. Make sure you know what congressional oversight is, guys. The two ways Congress can exercise oversight over the legislative, oh, over the executive branch. I'm sorry. 
Everybody good with congressional oversight? Anyone have any questions over congressional oversight? Congressional oversight is when Congress or the legislative branch exercise authority over the federal bureaucracy or the executive branch. They do that in two ways. They can mess with their budget or they can call the heads of agencies for a committee here to put pressure on them. And oh, anyone good with this? Also, these are self-explanatory. All I think that you should probably study for is Homeland Security. You should know that. Federal Election Commissions. Make sure you know that. Securities and Exchange. And Department of State. Make sure you know that. The rest are pretty much self-explanatory. Anyone have any questions on these? All right, guys. Log on to Google Classroom. Over there. Good luck. If you have any questions or live questions, you let me know.